Hello students, welcome. Welcome to MGM Education. This is Alternative English Plus 3. And the lesson is On Easy Homecoming. Written by Will F. Jenkins. <clears throat> a most famous profilic science fiction writer of 20th century in England. He wrote many, you know, uh, stories which were really based on dangerous scientific inventions and unlawful activities. One of them is your uneasy homecoming. It is also a story of Connie, the main character. What she discovers when she returns home after two weeks holiday and how suspense he has added, how the state of fear arrested the mind of Connie. Okay. And uh, Jenkins is a fiction writer very skillfully provided the theme in this lesson bringing together isolation and crime so which created a lot of suspense and tension and it is hidden for the readers to discover in the end still you will found interestingly something that the uh, story here is passing through a feeling of an anxiety of knowing what really is happening around but it is complete vague means unclear till the end that exactly what had happened inside the house why she uh, was afraid of okay let us know the details of this and he says that Connie is the chief character from the beginning to the end of the story who recognized the intruders whom we have suspected that someone has entered into the house and happens to be a criminal and who is uh, you know, in search of Connie to kill. This rumor went on and the tension rose to the height possible in the story. But what exactly happened here and what are the other characters involved in the story? Now I will tell you briefly about this then elaborate the keynotes. The characters chief of all is Connie and the story begins with Connie and auto driver. Then another character is Mrs. Winston and her son Charles and some other characters I mean whose names comes in between the story are Mr. Field, Mr. Sadler, the Smithson, the Blair and so many other people side by side and Tom is another character then uh, you will be knowing about the name of the criminal who is suspected name is not disclosed okay exactly the plots begin the plot of the story if you see uh, maximum incidents are inside the house and two incidents are outside the house so when she was out coming with the uh, coming to her house with an auto driver in a auto that was an out scene and then the motorcycle in flame or in fire that was um, outside incident so maximum incidents relating to plot are inside the house in the kitchen in the bedroom in the upstairs and downstairs are moving about okay so let us begin what happens so in the beginning line the author says that Connie began to have the feeling of dread, dread means fear and uneasiness in the text when she was coming and told herself 
it was not reasonable means she is talking to herself then trying to console herself that no no whatever i am thinking may not be the thing like this then she tells about uh, her house i mean their house means tom and connie's the house was the only one that had been built on the other side of the bay but she could see plenty of other houses as the taxi drew up before the door those other houses were across the bay but there was no reason to be set up she was firm with herself and by this time the taxi stopped the last thin line of the red sun went down means it became uh, you know na dark going to be dark and dusk was already here but everything looked uh, perfectly normal she says the house looked neat and welcoming when she came close to the house and says it was good to be back she paid the taxi driver and uh, requested him please take the suitcase inside the door and he has taken he kept the suitcase and the taxi driver has gone now began the uneasiness what is the uneasiness we will go through now she went into the kitchen then the feeling changed she was in the kitchen with the clothes smell of set up house about her when she noticed the change her suitcase still lay in the hall where the taxi driver had piled them and the front door was still open to let in the fresh air suddenly she had an urgent conviction that uh, there was something something yeah and a sensation went in her mind a feeling has rose in her mind there was a great silence outside when she came little close to the open the door this was dusk and the birds and insects noises were growing fainter and there were no neighbors near to make other sound that means here silence is a symbol of dread or fearfulness so silence is uh, referred by your author junkin after that uh, what happened she turned on the refrigerator and uh, found a sound there friendly humming sound she turned on the water and it poured out of the tap but uh, there her sensation took a new form it seemed that uh, every movement produced a noise see sound and fear here interlinked which advertises her presence and she felt that uh, there was some reason to be still and was really was a nonsense too that means she is talking to herself if a state of fear is coming to her mind and she reconciles herself but no no nothing is there after this what she did you know uh, went to the dining room so next the scene of dining room uh, she regarded her luggage still piled in the hall near the open front door everything look, looked exactly as everything should look so there was uh, still thinking comes to her mind that someone might be present here right and uh, she now hopes that her husband has been away on business still now he is not returned 
she says tom would get home about midnight she is thinking like this then she had spoken to him on the telephone yesterday and she hopes that positively he will back but it may be midnight she says like this then she moves towards the kitchen in kitchen she had looked straight at the back door without seeing what was there to be seen from kitchen to she went to the garden and from garden she felt the silent and she smell a uh, sweet smelling of the garden all these things see then she looked at the you know garage locked and empty and from garage she moved to uh, you know dining hall and then main hall she was moving like this in this way time passed on and gradually the, it is getting darker and darker and the fear is mounting her again and again so one type of nervousness she has developed then uh, there was a telephone talk between uh, connie and uh, uh, mrs uh, winston mrs winston was of her age so she feel it comfortable to talk with uh, her she found uh, mrs winston's voice was bright and cheerful over the phone who uttered like this my dear connie how nice it is that you are back with us then <clears throat> connie felt uh, better instantly she felt her tension leaving her she heard her voice explaining that she would have a lovely holiday and that tommy was coming back tonight after that uh, mrs winston said anxiously i do hope uh, your house is all right conny is it it has been dreadful here when she listened this why she is saying like this then she has passed some messages some information to you know conny uh and uh, she also had an appeal that if you are uh, in need of any bodies i will send my son charles for your safety as you are alone then she informed a lot of things burglary incidents that has taken place how the <laughs> burglary took place uh, she is saying like this see there had been a series of burglaries in the town Hamilton's house had been robbed while they were out for an evening uh, trip and uh, the Blairis house was looted then she tells the Smith sons and uh, Mr Sadler's shop was robbed the burglar seemed to know exactly where Mr Sadler kept his desk receipts and uh, took them after that she say about mr field poor mr field who has also been badly beaten by the burglaries and all the incidents when listened by conny her nervousness still increased and a lot of thought in air moved around her yet she gathered courage okay then she said i am all alone tom won't be back until midnight then uh, mrs winston explained oh my dear i will find you know i will find charles and get him to come for your right way you can spend the evening here and he can take you back when you need this was a offer from the side of you know mrs winston but uh, <coughs> conny didn't uh, accept it she refused then from telephone she moved aimlessly found herself at the foot of the stairs then she collected her suitcase <clears throat> and started to uh, 
upstairs it was deep night now she looked out at the garage and there was nothing she climbed the stair into the darkness nothing happened she pressed a switch and uh, the passes sprang into the light she bad breathed again she went into tom's and her bedroom there was dust on the dressing table she found here uh, on the bed someone as if sitting and there were uh, a smoke and some cigarette butts were found here and there she suspected maybe someone is there then she looked down the you know um, bed but found none then she pulled out a bag she got it was a bag with uh, uh, bulgars in it her hand shook horribly but she emptied its contents on the floor there were camera silvers and many other things she found then she suspected it may be the burglar's bag he has uh, uh, you know robbed the uh, ham uh, hamilton's shop and mr fields was hardly beaten it all this linking to that bag she has felt the burglar may be present here she might be uh, sorry he might be searching him to you know kill her so immediately quickly she was started shivering turned out the light in her bedroom and in the upstairs hall downstairs she turned out the light in the living room went quickly to the front door and locked it she was leaving it when she thought to feel her way across the dark room make sure that the window was locked then <laughs> from dining rooms light out the windows were locked the pantry it was dark pantry means the cooking the kitchen she studied the entire situation then found the window was broken a neat section of glass was also missing which made her confirm but definitely someone may be here conny turned off the light quickly and fled into the kitchen and made the dark and then despite that also some dim light was there and some light was coming out she stood panting in the blankness somewhere outside there were some sound sounds made by the frogs cracked and uh, there was a knock her heart stood still until yet she was feeling her heart beats are increasing in terror uh, after that she was moving towards the telephone she reached the telephone there was a faint noise which might have a footstep in the garden <laughs> she walked towards the garden and uh, there was a little fear that arrested her once again then she found to see a figure in the kitchen was throwing a torch beam on the floor then it halted and waiting she already doubts that someone is here and he knew that she was hiding somewhere in the house he went almost soundlessly into the living room she saw the glow of the light there back into the kitchen back into the kitchen she heard him moving quietly listening towards the door through then he came through that door within three feet of her but when he was fully through the doorway she was behind him again he flashed the light of downwards but he didn't think of oh uh, sorry think to look behind him right in this way the night is passing with full of suspense and tension okay then this man went into the dining room he moved very quietly and he was hunting her 
he knew that she was in the house and he had to kill her he had to get his loot and get away and she must not be able to tell anything about him to anyone therefore she say he is running after coni to kill her anyhow she managed to come out of the house near by the garage where she found a motorcycle fuel and some oil petrol rubbers and she felt the smell of the petrol is growing time to time and it, the motorcycle was of no use for her then what she did you know Connie had a box of matches in her pocket quickly she got it out and in one motion struck a match and dropped it and ran away into the darkness uh, with the strange feel of grass under her feet the petrol blazed she hid herself the fire would be seen across the bay it would plainly be at uh, conish house it was looking like that immediately the lights of the cars began to focus on her house and the bell of the fire engines started ringing grow louder and some of the people found to be gathering there and conny was now wondered and she is little relaxed and now she feels little safe now and well relaxed when this is all about the uneasiness she has faced in the story you have seen how suspense fear and tension arrested her for a long time over the night and which uh, came to an end after the blaze of the motorcycle near by the garage okay students thank you very much thank you very much for watching